I'd like to share one of my favorite hacks for reality shifting, and that is gamifying your experience of reality. This is so simple. Actually, it really, really is, but it's so powerful because what it does is it adjusts the mindset that you have because very often we get caught in these loops and I call them hamster wheels talked about them recently I'm not going to go back into it but we can we have these loops in our minds that we receive feedback from our external world and that powers up some sort of narrative structure in our minds and everybody has a unique narrative structure but there are common themes and so once you start to understand the power of your mind then when you change it and you work on mindset and this is where positive psychology has been around for a very long time because we've known this they had people in the 70s look in the mirror and smile at themselves like 10 times and say i'm gonna have a great day i'm gonna have a great day i'm gonna have a great day and over a number of repetitions it works it actually works and what happens is that you feed back into your brain into your mind I'm going to have a great day. I'm going to reality shift. My reality isn't looking the way that I expect it to. This is an incongruency. And we can analyze it and unpack why that is ad nauseum all day long. And in fact, sometimes we do in my client work and I enjoy the process, but sometimes You are moved to action because you know that you need to change something fast. So what do you do? You gamify reality. You start to see reality like a game, but you have to be careful because there are real consequences in this game. So let's think about it this way. There are numerous thought leaders out there discussing the fact that indeed it appears that there is scientific evidence that we are living in a holographic reality and that we've known this for decades. Okay, but what does that mean? Well, that means that the structure of reality is more than what our tangible everyday experience of it is. The internal housing unit unit in our minds doesn't perceive that it's a hologram. Why is this important? Because does that mean that there are multiples? If there's one, why wouldn't there be more? Could you shift in and out of different multiverse? No. Holograms? Wait, what's the difference? Hmm, interesting. Let's just hold on to that thought just for a moment. There are also numerous studies, scientific thought leaders that are indicating that we actually live in a simulation. What does that mean, practically speaking? Does that mean we can control it? Hmm. If we could control it, How would we know? Well, we would look at our modern day culture and we would see if there were any teachings or trainings about the ability to create our own reality. And indeed, we have numerous thought leaders that suggest that we can do exactly that. So now we have all of these pieces that we live in a holographic simulated reality that we can contribute building to. This is a game changer. And when you factor in that there are multiples, high probability of there being multiples. In fact, it's just common knowledge now that there are multiple dimensions, not just in the esoteric mystical fields, but in actual scientific discussions there are multiple dimensions 
And apparently, and I just heard about this on the Joe Rogan podcast today with uh, Tucker Carlson, there was a project called Project Aqua that references, explicitly references, and this was just leaked accidentally to the public, the ability for us to traverse some of these extra dimensions. What? What? And, get this, that a topic of interest at that time was controlling technology with the conscious mind. So now we have this schema, if you will, this set of ideas that you as an individual, as an operator in this reality, assuming that we are sharing the same time-space continuum and section of it, well, probably not the time slice, but the space type. <laughs> the space section, most likely. Now, you as an operator have the ability to instead of just be a passenger alongside of whatever operating system that you have that's booting up every morning and just kind of observing it if you're conscious and are sentient or not, if you're unconscious still, and hey, we love the unawake people too, and even the NPCs. You guys are welcome here. It's okay. But now you have at your fingertips the ability to become a creator. What does that actually practically mean for you? If you embody some of these techniques, and there are numerous teachers out there that are teaching manifestation, I've got my own flavor. There are many, many teachers out there. This has been around. I remember going to an estate cell in Dallas, Texas, like 2019. And it was this really beautiful, affluent neighborhood. And the estate was, wow, it was like an art museum inside. And all of the collectibles were just so energetically cared for. You can tell that everything was placed with purpose and reason there and they had jewelry and art and furniture that looked handcrafted and very very special and I happened to be drawn to their books actually and I found this book that was written I believe in the 1940s that taught manifestation principles and positive psychology they knew about it even then and the same ideas that are being recapitulated in our world today was being recapitulated then or minted then rather I should say because I don't know if that was the origin and I don't know if they were repeating what they had learned probably yes but from my personal experience this was the first time I had seen something dated that early because what I was exposed to as sort of thought expansion books was reading Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People which at the time seemed really powerful and significant especially being forced to read it in high school <laughs> and now I look back and I see it as manipulative that's my honest take because it teaches how to be inauthentic. And our class read that book as part of the future business leaders of America and trained us on those techniques, which were very powerful marketing techniques for getting people to buy things from you and getting people to say yes to you and to open their door to you and remove their resistance. And the techniques work. They actually do. And you see that people are still using them in predominantly unconscious societies. Advertisers and marketers rely on hijacking people's unconscious minds and subtly or sometimes not so subtly getting them to do and buy what they want. 
And so to find a book that was next level, transcendental psychology, if you will, talking about opening the mind, positive psychology techniques, talking about authenticity and vibration, and but to do so in a very 1940s way was such a special gem. I purchased that book. I no longer have it, unfortunately. But it was mind-blowing, mind-blowing at that time. And so now we understand that when you hack your own psychology to see the world in a certain way, the world will respond. It has to respond to you. And you can pick your lane of teaching, but all you have to do is actually pick a lane. And with your dedication and discipline, train your content feed to instill those ideas in you. And then your world will shift. And one of the best techniques that I do to think about how to shift my reality quickly is that I let go of how it's working because I can get lost there because I love exploring the how and the why. And as a scientist by training, a former scientist, literally I spent years in the weeds discovering the hows and the whys of certain principles. And what this does is this takes a lot of thought energy and you could spend a lot of time in discussion and even thinking patterns and running loops in your mind trying to figure out the back end machinery of the universe. And you can go into many, many different rabbit holes. Meanwhile, your reality stays kind of fixed because your mental energy is all in the theory and not in the practical. So one way to let go of all of it is to say, it doesn't matter because there are many different possibilities. That's step one. It doesn't matter. There are many possibilities. I'm in a maze. This is step two, visualization. I'm in a maze or a choose your own adventure book, whichever your preference. I go back and forth. Lately, it's been a maze. And every decision that I make is going to take me to a certain quadrant of the maze. This maze happens to be the space-time continuum. But I like to imagine it like this old-fashioned like 2D maze where I'm looking at my avatar walking around in daily life, boxed into these walls and barriers. And in my avatar, I can't really always see the entire maze. I only see what's in front of me. But what I do see is the ability to go straight, left or right. Your maze might look different, but this is what mine looks like. Now I imagine that whenever I'm at a crossroads of a decision point, an action, a goal or a plan, that is me in the maze deciding to go straight, which will take me to the north part of the maze, left, which will take me to the west part of the maze, or right, which will take me to the east part of the maze. And in the north part of the maze, I need to feel out who's at the other end. Do I have friends and a party there? Or do I have heartbreak and misery and soul-crushing suffering there? Because I, I've had enough suffering in my life. I'm sure you have too, right? Do I have poverty there? Do I have sleeping in a cardboard box there? Because if so, then I want to go left or right. So then, step three is actually meditating on the different lifelines that you have access to particularly if you have high impact decision. Like if you want to start five different businesses, I know many of you out there are multi-potentialites and you have lots of many ideas or even pivoting and taking your projects in different directions. Which ones do you focus on right now? How do you know that? Do you do it just from the mind? Oh, this seems like a good idea. Nope. Mm -mm, no, that's flying blind. That's being in the avatar 
and the perspective of just walking through the maze with your hands out on the wall, your eyes are closed and you're kind of feeling around, except you're not really feeling around with your hands, you're feeling around with your mind and you don't even have a map. So you're just walking in theory, not really connecting to what things feel like, what the future feels like. And one of the best ways that you can figure this out, if you're not attuned to some of the abilities where you can tap into other lifelines, and I do have a meditation, a quantum meditation on my YouTube channel where you can do a meditation and tap in if you want to. The other way is you can look at what is happening in your day-to-day -day reality. When you start to turn left, let's say you decide on a relationship, you decide on a career path. You move in that direction and then you observe. This is the next step. You test it out and you let reality concur with you. And you see how it feels, what level of resistance you have. Are you going to be a goat on the mountain that has to climb day in and day out and just beating yourself up and it's a tough climb and maybe you're up for that. Maybe you want a smoother trek. Maybe you want to swim upstream like a salmon. When you go in that direction and you notice that doors are closed for you and you have to bang on them, like I realized this when looking for funding for a psychedelic business that I had that I, it wasn't the right time because it was like I was knocking on all the doors and all the doors were not answering me. <laughs> it was like, not all of them, but most of them were just not answering at all. <laughs> it was like crickets. And a couple of the doors did answer and they were like, no. And I appreciated that. But that told me holistically that that part of the maze was not going to be an easy ride. So what did I do? I shifted directions and I started limiting my energy expenditures into my psychedelic business. I started being more selective. I started refining my plan for the long term instead of the short term, putting that on the back burner and prioritizing other aspects, content creation, reality shifting coaching. Boom. All of a sudden doors are just like boom, boom, boom. And as a result, it has been a much easier experience. I still have challenges, of course, and it's, I'm still in the building process and I'm still very early on. But this part of the maze for me is a different experience because there's less resistance. There's more interest. There's more vibrancy. There's fertile ground. So this is how you can actually take these ideas and apply them in your real practical life. And once you understand that reality is a game for you to optimize and that every decision that you're making is leading you to a different choose your own adventure path or a different part of the maze and you're the driver the entire time, it doesn't matter how it works as long as you find your lane for making it work whatever concepts click in your head, whatever teachers allow that to happen, that's all you need. And then when things start working the way that you need them to, then you can have the existential life crisis discussions about fundamentally what is going on. And this is a way that if you find yourself in a collective that isn't moving in a direction that you are happy about, Explore whether or not you have other collectives available to you because I know that they exist. I don't know if you're going to have access to all of them. I don't always have access to all of them. I just know that it is a big series of multiverse holograms out there and that 
you have options. But when you believe that you don't, then guess what you do? You create and co-create with the manifestation engine that you don't have options. And then what happens? You're boxed in to a part of the maze. And I don't, I don't know if there's a rat eating cheese in that one. I'm just saying. <laughs> and so you have to be very mindful about your belief system and your thought creation and who you are creating with and how you are creating collectively. And this is why it's also very important to be mindful of the content that you are consuming and to be able to keep a balanced perspective about what is unfolding. And sometimes the path is not what you think it is. So just because reality isn't demonstrating to you what you believe it should doesn't mean that you're in the wrong place. But I have other episodes that you can check out for that. So listen, I am a reality shifting coach. And if you would like help optimizing your reality, definitely reach out to me, sacredjourneyproductions at gmail.